guys and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Vlogmas Day 10. As you guys can see, I have a full face of makeup on right now and I'm chilling by my couch. I decided that for today's video, I kind of wanted to run through my everyday makeup look and to share some thoughts on some brand new products that I just recently incorporated into my beauty routine. I know a lot of these products are not necessarily new to the market, but they are new to me. But I did want to share my thoughts and feelings on some of these products with you guys so that you can kind of like know what to expect if you're thinking of trying them out for yourself. If you guys have been following me on Instagram for a while, then you'll probably have seen some of these opened up on previous unboxings on my stories, and they finally made their way into my beauty routine. Some of them I did promise I was gonna give you guys reviews anyway, so here's my review for them. But this is essentially my everyday look. I did wanna preface, I don't wear makeup every single day. I usually only wear makeup when I'm filming or shooting videos and content, especially for brands. So it's a little bit more aggressive than what most people's everyday makeup look will look like. If I really just need to throw on makeup for the purpose of wearing makeup for the day, and I'm not shooting or filming anything, then to be very honest, it's probably just mascara and brows and maybe a lip product. I don't even really bother with foundation, but I feel like the minute I put on foundation, it just really cancels out my whole face so much that I had to like contour, highlight and blush to put some life back into my face, which is why I end up with a full face of makeup. This is pretty full coverage glam for me. I don't really go any glamour than this, unless I add a lot of extra sparkle to my look, which don't worry, that's coming to you guys soon in a video for the holidays. I'm gonna share with you this season's go-to holiday glam look. It's gonna be really fun. Expect lots of sparkle and shimmer and glitter and gold stuff. But otherwise, I'm gonna jump straight into the video and show you guys how I achieve my everyday makeup look and share my thoughts and feelings of some new products I've been trying. So I'm gonna start off with the base right now. There's nothing really on my face besides tinted sunscreen, which is why my skin may look like it's a little bit even. Um, the purpose of this video is actually kind of share with you guys my current makeup routine and some new products that I've been trying and also give you my kind of reviews on them at the moment. So the first thing we're gonna start off with is the Smashbox and Vlada Photo Finish Petal Metal Primer. I know this is not brand new to the market, but I've actually had this sitting in my stash for quite a while, and I just started using it recently because my Marc Jacobs Dewy Finish, whatever that's called, that photo primer, I finished it completely, so I needed a new one, and I like to have kind of like a luminous base, so I always use primers that have shimmer finishes in them. So I'm gonna apply this all over my face. I just put one dab here one dab on top and one dab here. I also find that because this has like a slight pinky orange tint to it, it helps make me look a little bit tanner-ish in the winter time than when I do regularly without it. The Marc Jacobs one is really nice. It's just not uh, the exact color that I would like to use to keep my tan. So I find that that one's great for the summertime. This one has been amazing for the winter time so far. So I'm just gonna blend that out with my Marc Jacobs foundation brush. I still use this. It's dirty, don't at me guys. I just use it because it's the one that's sitting on my table right now. So I really like this primer, primarily because it has like a shimmer base to it, like I said, and that means that when I highlight my face, I don't need to put as much highlight on. I mean, it actually makes my whole face look like I have a very dewy finish to it, which I love, and it's great. It also sits really well underneath the foundation. It doesn't make my skin look cakey, and it does a good job at making the foundation sit and like melt into my skin as well, which is why I really like it. So, advice to you guys, if you're looking for that dewy skin finish that makes you glow from every angle, I would highly recommend getting an illuminating primer, such as this one or the Marc Jacobs Dew Drops. That's what they're called, Marc Jacobs Dew Drops. Now I remember. I hope this lighting's a little bit better for a makeup video for you guys than my usual lighting for makeup videos. I'm still trying to figure out that situation so that if I film more, get ready with me slash here's what I did for this look. The lighting's a little bit better. I don't have a studio and I don't have a studio set up with lights either. So that could be an option. I might actually just buy a backdrop so I can sit in front of my window because I live in a condo and it essentially turns into a, a tunnel at certain parts of the day. The back of it absorbs light completely. As you can see, it's very dark and backlit over there. And in the front here, it's super, super bright when I sit directly in front of the window. So now that I have the whole primer on, I'm gonna go ahead and apply foundation. The foundation that I've been using lately is the brand new Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. Stays all day and night. This is what this bottle looks like. I actually really like this foundation just because I find that it's a super um, full coverage one. I don't have the worst acne right now, but it's this is on like the moderate scale for my skin. It was really, really bad when I was in Copenhagen and Stockholm, and I didn't have the Charlotte Tilbury foundation with me at the time, and I would have loved it because it would have done a really good job at hiding all of my um, acne breakouts. But I do have it now, and I'm really liking the coverage. Oh, I need to show you guys. 
I think the pump on mine is broken, so I have to apply it like this. I literally pumped it like 30 times and spent like 10 minutes trying to like press the pump to get the foundation out and it wouldn't come out. So now I resort to taking it out and applying it like a wand. I put a little bit here, a little bit here, and a little bit on my forehead. And I find that a little goes a long way with this foundation, so you do not need a lot. And it's actually kind of nice applying it this way because then I can like spread it out a little bit more. So yeah, pump is broken. Kind of sucks because I was looking forward to using the pump. It would have been a lot more cleaner. And now I'm pretty sure that the, whatever that base is called where you screw it back in is gonna get really dirty easily now that I don't have a pump. So that's the only thing that sucks. Um, I got it as a PR package. So I don't think I can just bring it back in the store and exchange it, but I do really love the foundation. So I'm gonna try to find a way to make it work, which involves just opening up the pump and using it as such. So as you guys can see, it shears out really nicely and spreads and blends really easily but at the same time it feels super full coverage so i've been liking that oh i forgot to mention what shade i am the shade that i'm using is 7.5 neutral so if you have all of these skin tones like i do that's probably a good one for you to look into i'm not the tannest right now just because i haven't been really spending a lot of time in sunny destinations over the last couple of few months so the tan that i had over the summertime has worn out but i'm quite dark naturally when it comes to my skin tone um, I'm not super pale so I'm usually on like the medium end of the spectrum when it comes to foundation though I know that people can have way darker skin but just to let you guys know I'm also a 3N in the Dior Batch Stage foundation that's also another one of my huge favorite ones I actually think I like that one a little bit more than this one because this one has like a dewy-ish finish whereas that one just like melts into the skin and I can get away without setting it if I didn't need to I also like that this foundation doesn't set too too quickly because I can apply it like I said to the, to the two cheeks and my forehead without it getting too dry and settling in right away which is probably why it has a dewy finish because it's not a dry foundation or like a matte finish but it blends in really nice and if I don't know if you guys can see I had a lot of pimples on this cheek here and usually I finish it off with whatever's left over my brush and I kind of just like dab into it to give it some extra coverage any red spots that i may have but that's essentially it so this is what my face looks like with just the foundation on i really like it i probably would just apply this on its own without any sort of concealer if i wanted to but i'm gonna be taking some pictures today so i'm just gonna apply some concealer as well so i can run you guys through this marc jacobs accomplice concealer so this is the shade that i'm using this is in light 26 and it is a stick concealer i actually don't use concealers quite often just because i find that i don't have heavy dark under eye circles that require it but on days when I want to shoot and make sure that my skin looks perfect, I apply it just underneath my eyes and on the sides of my nose, just like that. So this is the Marc Jacobs Accomplice Concealer. It looks like a lipstick bullet, like this. I really like it because it's super lightweight and I can carry it with me everywhere I go. It doesn't take up a lot of space in my bag. And because it is a stick concealer, the consistency isn't super liquidy. I find that it blends out really nicely and it sets as well. It's kind of thicker than some other concealers I have. I've never used a Tarte Shape Tape one but I've heard amazing things about it, like everybody. Would love to get my hands on it, but I know that it's a really high coverage concealer and I don't have a lot that I typically conceal, so I haven't gravitated towards it yet. I think it's also a lot thicker for formula too. So I mostly focus it around my nose, under my eyes, similar to the foundation. If I have any leftover on my brush, I just dab it in like this and kind of like pack it into my skin. And if I do have a lot of left over in my brush, I like to use any excess that I have and just dab it on to my forehead right here to help kind of highlight that. The sun is changing right now and there's a huge cloud patch that's like going right by. So if you guys see it getting darker, let me just fix this and make it go a little bit brighter if I can. Hopefully you guys can see me and this is not too much of a shock as to how bright it is. Now I'm gonna actually go in and set the foundation and the concealer. So for the longest time I was using the Stila In The Buff Powder Spray. But for some reason, the I think the mechanism in here was not dispensing the product anymore. So we actually switched over to the Guerlain Meteorites Compact Powder, and this is in the number two Claire Light. This is what the compact looks like on its own. When you open it up, it looks like this. Mine's just really dirty because I've been using it a lot recently, but I like this compact powder actually quite a bit because I find that it sets my makeup nicely without it seeming like too matte, if that makes sense. Like it still keeps a dewy finish. I think it's because of the Meteorites powder it has some light, like light reflective um, particles in it as well that it keeps the dewiness alive so not only do i have dewiness with my primer underneath my foundation but the foundation itself is also a little bit dewy and the setting powder also has some light reflective particles in it as well so keeps my skin feeling really glowy and luminous during the winter time when i'm not luminous i actually find that my skin gets really really dry it's not cute 
So this is my go-to combination to make sure I have light, reflective, dewy, soft, glowing skin. I don't know how many more adjectives I could come up with for that. This, the only thing I don't like about this is that I feel that like this compact is like really, really pressed in. So I have actually a hard time picking product up with my brush, which is why I'm doing it so heavily on my face right now. I also like to really set down my face because I have a really oily skin. So throughout the day, my skin gets quite oily. And if I can overset it, then it accounts for the oiliness and really counteracts it. All right, so my face is all set. Time to move on to the contour. So for contour, you guys know that I really love the YSL Les Saharien um, bronzer for the longest time, but I finished it and it looks like absolute trash. So I threw it out and I've actually recently started using a brand new one from a NARS palette that I have. This is the NARS Hot Nights Face Palette. I really, really love using, I think this one is called Manihi. It's this shade at the bottom right down here to bronze and contour my face. It's a nice kind of darker-ish brown. I actually find that this one's a little bit darker than the YSL bronzer that I was using previously, but it shears out really, really nicely. It has more of like, I would say a dusty brown color than the YSL one that was a little bit more orangey brown. It's definitely less saturated when it comes to the oranges. So I'm gonna swirl my brush in there. Just apply, I like to apply similar to before to my cheeks and I really take my time to shear this one out because it is a little bit darker than the YSL one. Any excess that I have, I put at the base of my cheek here to really cut the jawline. There's not much when it comes to excess, so I don't have to worry about it being too pigmented. And then I take a little bit more of my brush in the pan and I swirl it up along to the forehead. So because I haven't been spending a lot of time right now out in the sun, in hot destinations. I like to add a little bit of extra bronze to my face to give myself that glow, especially since I don't fake tan. So this gives my face like a nice little summer glow that I can fake without having to go outdoors. I really, really like this palette, primarily because of this little bronzer color in here. I haven't really touched the other shades in this palette. Actually, I have touched the highlighter in here. This one's pretty nice on the face. I am trying to finish up my Charlotte Tilbury Brick of Gold, Bar of Gold trio right now. Once I finish up that one, then I'll start using this highlighter. But because I've finished one shade halfway through another and I have one shade left, I just want to use it up because I don't want to throw out that, the whole face palette. That's the one thing I'm not the biggest fan about when it comes to face palettes is that if you find a specific shade that you like, and you use it all up, then you're kind of stuck with keeping the palette around until you finish all the other shades. Just because, well, at least for me, I don't want to waste it and throw it perfectly good makeup. So I keep it around until I'm finished all of it. So that's essentially what my skin looks like once it's finished being contoured with the bronzer. What do you guys think? It's a nice, smooth, subtle, glow I find it's not too harsh and it doesn't look like I really tried to carve out my face I'm not the biggest fan um, of liquid bronzers or like putties when it comes to carving out your face or like stick bronzers I like to use powders I find that they share it a lot easier so that's my go-to so this is the NARS hot nights palette and that's what I've been using recently to really contour my face so now moving on to blush I'm still using the Rock and Republic one this is the bedroom contrived Press blush. I know everybody tells me this is disgusting and I should throw it out, but it is a solid powdered product. So I don't think there's anything in here that really stands to build up bacteria. I have a pan though, which is really nice. I've actually been really proud about that and I just want this pan to grow so I can finish using all the product. But like literally guys, all I do is I just like dab it a few times and that's all the product I need. It is so freaking pigmented, which is why it's been taking me forever to finish this product. Like, look at that. It looks like I have a blush explosion on my face. I'm gonna have to veil this out a little bit with my setting powder afterwards, just to make it blend in a little bit more. But I'm also shooting today. If you guys didn't know, you actually have to pack on your color a little bit heavier when you're shooting, just because the camera doesn't do a good job at catching it. So the harder you pack it on, the brighter it's gonna look like in the photo. And photography makeup is way heavier than everyday normal makeup. I'll tell you guys that right now, which is why I'm kind of okay with it being packed on. Not loving it though. It looks like I just like went outside and spent 10 hours in the in the cold and now I'm freezing. So I'm gonna see if I can veil it out with my highlighter a little bit. Like I said, I'm still using the Charlotte Tilbury Bar of Gold palette. And to show you what I mean by not wasting product, this one in the middle right here was my absolute favorite. I fully finished it and it looks very similar to the NARS one, which is why I'm excited to try out that one once this palette is finished. I am currently working on this one here. It's a little bit more of like a bronzy, coppery color and it's done a good job at keeping my face look a little bit more bronze for the winter time. And here is the lightest shade. It's like a champagne color. I haven't really touched that one that much just because I find that it's not suitable for my skin tone at the moment, but I don't want to throw out this whole palette until I'm finished using it because I just don't want to waste it. So 
I just take like a light little fluffy brush and typically what I do is I just rub it into the, the gold one a little bit and then take a little bit of the pink as a dust and I just dust it onto the high points on my cheek here. This will really help to veil out the blush a little bit. Look at that, super, super glowy. And then I'm gonna also apply it to the left side. Love, love, love this palette. If I could recommend one Charlotte Tilbury product, this is number one that I would recommend, the Bar of Gold palette. I think you can also still get the singular one on its own. I think it's still available, I'm not 100% sure, so please do not quote me on that. But the palette here, I've been using it for the past year and I'm obsessed. There's so much product in here, I feel like I could use this forever. And then I just dab a little bit extra on my nose to give myself that pricky little glow. I wish I had that ski bump nose, ski slope. I think that's what it's called, the ski slope. The ski slope snow. Oh my God, that is a tongue twister. Ski slope nose. There you go. I wish I had a little ski slope snow. Sleep. Ugh, I'm not gonna even bother, guys. I wish I had a cuter nose. I know I have a really wide one, but that's okay. We'll live with it. So the next thing we're gonna be doing now is moving on to the eyes. I am still using my Charlotte Tilbury Stars In Your Eyes palette. You guys may recognize this one from some of my previous videos when it comes to makeup. I really love this one and I almost, I think, hit pan on the lightest color. This is a base color that I've been using right here and it feels like I'm gonna hit pan quite soon because it's it's dipping low, as Christina Milian would say, dip it low. I'm gonna dab right into that. This is my basic everyday makeup look right now, so it hasn't changed too much, except for some of the new products that I mentioned previously. I have a couple other new products I wanna share with you guys as well too, so just hang tight. Let me apply the makeup that I put onto my eyes regularly for every day has not changed since the last video, so I'm gonna speed through that one for you guys. So that's my eye look complete. I'm gonna link the video of where I did my everyday eye look down below so you guys can check that out if you wanna know exactly the products that I used and how I accomplished it. But something I do, I did wanna share with you guys that I actually, well, I know this is not new, but this is the first time I'm really using it. So I just finished using my Marcel Precision Eyeliner that I was using for the longest time, and it's a felt tip one. It's a liquid liner felt tip in the shade Deep Brown. Looks like this. I really liked it just because it's a nice brown shade, so it doesn't look too stark of a contrast against my skin tone, but it dried up, and it's been a few months of me using this, so I'm really sad. This is definitely one I would repurchase with my own money in the future, and it's pretty affordable since it is Marcel, so you can get it in the drugstore comparable to a lot of other high-end luxury makeup that I've purchased in the past. I really liked it. It has a really long staying power and for somebody who has oily eyelids and tends to tear up a lot, I found that it did a really good job of not smudging all along my eyes. So I liked it. It applied really well, was waterproof, and yeah. I would recommend it. If you guys are looking for a brown eyeliner, definitely check out Marcel. Probably gonna get myself one the next time I'm at the drugstore because I just I just like brown. And as much as like brands send us a lot of eyeliner and makeup, they never really send browns that often. So I'm gonna have to hunt down my next brown one for myself. So right now I'm currently using the L'Oreal Paris and Camila Cabello collaboration. This is the Havana black eyeliner. This is what this one looks like. It's a very, very thick one actually. Let me just show you. This is how thick the base is but it does a really good job at applying the eyeliner precisely onto my eyes, and I like it. The only thing that I don't like about this eyeliner is that I find that it leaks a little bit in the cap every time I pull it out, and there's like a ton of black smudges inside, so I don't know if the pen itself is faulty, or it's just touching, like the tip is touching the cap whenever I take it out, but I'm gonna apply it and show you guys how it looks. I like it because it's so thick, it automatically creates a wing right away, and it's a nice, really defined wing. It's like a nice, thick hold on your hand. It doesn't feel like it's too small, so I feel like I can like really grip it nicely. I'm gonna apply that and then I'll show you guys what it looks like afterwards. Like see how easy that one swipe was? I literally just dabbed it on and pulled it. It's like a stencil almost to get that wing. It's like a very, very dark black though, so if you guys don't like black, I would recommend against it, but it applies really well. This one's called the Flash Liner in Black Noir. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not the person that can just like put my eyeliner on and just like drag it and have the perfect eyeliner across my face. I like to do little tiny strokes with it. So that's what you're probably seeing right now. And with the dabs, it does a really good job at like not spreading out and leaking into your skin folds, if that makes sense. Some of the eyeliners that I had in the past were way too liquidy and they did that. This one doesn't, which is why I like it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this eye as well. So when it comes to this eyeliner, I find that it has like a really extremely precise application. It actually acts more as a stamp to me than an eyeliner because the felt tip is not exactly the most flexible. So it doesn't bend and curve and swipe to your, I guess your eye contour as easily as some other felt tip pens do. I don't know if this is gonna soften up and get smoother to use with progressive use because I've only just recently been using this for the past 
two weeks, but my thought so far is that it does a good job at creating a wing. And then when it comes to the rest of the eye, I find that I really have to like lift it up and kind of like swipe it on in small little motions because it doesn't bend and fold directly. You'll have to be careful just because it's not flexible. I find that you could potentially poke your eye out with that one, but I like it. The staying power is really good. It lasts me an entire day without smudging. It doesn't leak when my eyes tear up or my eye gets oily, so primarily why I like it. So I really like that one, highly recommend it. I have to shift the camera a little bit over to the side because the sun is changing and I have a bar in the window right in front of me that's gonna eventually shift to the front of my face if I stayed in that same position. So now that we're done the eyeliner, before I move on to mascara, I like to let my eyeliner sit and dry a little bit. So I'm gonna go straight into the brows. As you guys may know, I have been using the L'Oreal Unbeliever Brow for the longest time ever and I cannot rave more about this product. It is so amazing. I've used it so much that the label on the front of the tube is actually all completely rubbed off now so I don't even know where the label for this is but I like it and it comes with this brush that has a spoolie on the end of it the brush does a really good job at distributing the product onto my eyebrows so I literally just swipe it off like this until I have a fairly decent amount on my brush and then I go in and I carve up my brows with this so give me a second as I carve this out <laughs> And then afterwards, I just like to brush it out with the spoolie in to really distribute the product and kind of shade it in a little bit more. I find that this gives it more of like an airbrush finish to my brows. So that is essentially it for one brow. I'm gonna go in and do the other one. Likewise to my eye look, I've been using this product for the past five or six months now. So you can also find out how I do my brows in the same video as how I do my everyday eye makeup look. Voila, that is the finished brow look. I really like this product, but the one thing I did want to mention is that the brush that comes with it, although it performs really, really well, there is a lot of product in the tube here, and it's going to last you a really, really long time. I find that because this brush is, like, let's be honest, it is a drugstore brush, so it's not exactly formulated to be spectacular, although I can't necessarily say the same for luxury makeup because I don't think that their brushes are made with like the highest quality materials either. But my spoolie on the other one actually fell off completely, so I had to throw that one out, and luckily I had two of these products lying around in my makeup vanity area so I just pulled the brand new brush out of the other one that I wasn't using quite yet to use with this one which kind of sucks because by the time I finish this one and I pull out the other brow product this brush probably will be dead and I'll have to go find a new one somewhere or I might just order a bunch of spoolies online on Amazon realistically I just need the spoolie and this angled brush to apply the product to my skin. I don't know if this brush is specifically designed to optimize the application of this product, but I'm gonna test it out with other angle brushes to see if I can get the same-ish result before I get back to you guys as to whether or not you can just go straight to Amazon and purchase your own or use an existing brush. But so far, I really like the combination of these two together. They work really well. Could not say better things about this uh, L'Oreal Unbelievable Brow. Highly, highly recommend for a drugstore. Well, I have quite a few drugstore products in this list so far. Well, not a few, just this and the eyeliner. They're great. I usually have a really hard time when it comes to finding waterproof products just because my skin is so oily. Um, but I found some pretty amazing ones when it comes to drugstores. So I'm gonna link them down below. You guys can also check them out and let me know your thoughts. If you've also been using them, I'd love to know if you like them as well. So we're gonna be skipping back over to the eyes to do the mascara. As always, I'm just using my Shi Moral Eyelash Curler to curl my eyelashes. So I'm gonna do that and then apply my mascara. So back to mascara, I'm currently using the CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume in Waterproof. As always, this is my tried and true mascara from middle school, high school. So I know that whenever I run out of any other mascaras, I can always use this one and my eyes are good to go. I have actually though, since I used the Lancome Monsieur Big one, I found that this one smudges a little bit compared to that one. I get kind of raccoony eyes and I don't know if it's because I'm not sitting my eyes underneath here properly. I really am applying the product on or if it's just that the product itself is a little bit more smudgy than the Lancome Mr. Big one, but that one's a little pricey, so I try not to get that one if I have some other waterproof mascaras lying around. So I'm just gonna apply this one and I'll come back to you guys. <music> mascara fully applied, there you go. I kind of messed up this side a little bit and got some mascara on my eyelid, but that's okay. We're just going for a casual look today. I've learned to not care when my mascara smudges. My makeup does not need to be perfect. So now that the face is essentially finished, the only thing left to do is to apply the lips. And I have been really, really getting onto the lip stain train over the past year just because whenever I apply a lip product on, well, if I have makeup on, I need to apply a lip product on just because I find the foundation really washes out my lips. So when I blend it, it gets onto my lips. So I've been applying a lot of lip products recently. And the only issue that sucks about lip products is sometimes they come off, like when you're eating, drinking, Whenever I kiss Peter, he always complains that 
I'm getting lip product all over his face. You're not a fan, are you? Yuck. <laughs> no, he doesn't like it. Actually, he looks at me now every time he's about to kiss me and assesses and he's like, you have stuff on your face. So no. So I've been using this Tony Moly lip stain that I got from the Revolve Beauty Box. I believe Tony Moly is a Korean makeup brand. I may be incorrect, but it delivers the most beautiful and pigmented lips ever and they don't budge. Like seriously, they don't budge at the end of the night until you take it off with an oil cleanser. I use the Shuyumura, um oil cleanser and that does a really good job of taking everything off. But in the meantime, leading up until that, it does not budge. You can eat food, you can drink coffee, you can kiss as many people as you want and your lips are gonna look a beautiful, cute, tinted red color. And because of that, I don't need to bring as many lip products in my purse anymore, which is nice because I also get to lighten up my purse a little bit now. All right, so that is the complete look of all the products that I used on my face. And this is kind of my current beauty, everyday routine, whatever I'm going to shoot. To be honest, guys, I don't really wear makeup on days when I'm not shooting, so this is why it looks a little bit more than most people's everyday makeup look. So I hope you guys enjoyed my review of some brand new products that I've been using recently. I know not all of them are new to the market right now, but they are new to me just because I just got the chance to start using them in my everyday kind of like makeup routine. If you guys liked any of these products or you have really enjoyed using them yourself, please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to know your impressions of the products as well. And I'm also going to make make sure to link everything in the description box so that you guys can check it out for yourself if you would like to. But thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making this and sharing my thoughts of some new products that I've been using in my routine. Make sure to follow me on Instagram here and on Twitter here. Otherwise, I hope you guys have an awesome day and I will see you in tomorrow's Vlogmas. Bye!